the sea have ever been of an inquisitive nature, exploring the unknown and the point which this film endeavors to establish, dissatisfied unless able to recognize and classify the approaching stranger. The duties of the Royal Air Force, particularly perhaps the Coastal Command, when operating over the sea, are sufficiently well known to make other than brief comment here superfluous, ranging from reporting the position, the disposition and composition, the course and speed of enemy forces and the striking of a seaborne enemy, The Royal Air Force cooperates with the Royal Navy in carrying out the successful achievement of this, the safe conduct of convoys, and strains every nerve to avoid this, the sinking of British tonnage. For the last four centuries or so, Sea power has played a dominant role in Britain's victories, and today the Empire confidently looks to combine sea and air power to thrash an upstart enemy whose sea manners are deplorable. Up to the challenge, who goes there? This film answers, Fred, because it portrays for you some of the types of ships in the Royal Navy in order that you may recognize them when you meet again. And incidentally, next time you see your sailor friend ashore, ask him how much time he's been putting in an aircraft recognition. I'll guarantee you don't want to drop bombs on him, and neither does he want to take a crack at you. Which reminds us of Lord Nelson's remark. Damn our enemies, and God bless our friends. Amen. Let us therefore examine some of the types of ship which sail to form a fleet. The battle fleet is composed of battleships and sometimes battle cruisers. Battleships are the full backs of the British Navy, and the first thing that strikes one is their powerful appearance. Note this massive towering superstructure and the broad hull which lies comparatively low in the water. Of quite a different type is the cruiser, generally referred to under one of two headings. The heavy cruiser, or 10,000 tonner, and the light cruiser. Cruisers have a variety of duties and will be found forming reconnaissance screens ahead of or flanking the battle fleet and roam the ocean highways across the empire from Malta to the Far East and carry out protective trade patrols and convoy duties and keep a watchful eye on British interests wherever the flag is flown. And here is another type, the destroyer sometimes referred to in the Navy as the maid of all work. The primary function of destroyers is to deliver torpedo attacks on the enemy's forces, all or any of the enemy's forces. Destroyers also do everything that is possible to make life in enemy submarine thoroughly unenviable. These pictures demonstrate an attack on an enemy submarine with depth charges. These depth charges are timed to explode at about 80 feet below the surface. If the enemy submarine gets through this lot, it will be lucky. High-speed mine laying and mine sweeping and the laying of smoke screens again 
finds these rakish little vessels busily and effectively engaged. These pictures show a smoke screen being laid, the sort of smoke screen which is sometimes used to protect convoys. Smaller still is the sloop. Sloops being vessels of about a thousand tons displacement. They are lightly armed with guns four-inch guns generally, and sometimes only one or two of these. And they carry out a great deal of coastal convoy duty, for which they are armed with a full complement of depth charges as their main offensive equipment and light anti-aircraft armament. Smaller still, though second to none in steadfast achievement, are the minesweepers. Small vessels of the trawler type, the function of the minesweeper is amply demonstrated by this diagrammatic picture now on the screen. Last but not least is the aircraft carrier. Here are some of our chaps giving the Ark Royal a cheer when she came back from her epic operation at Taranto. Generally escorted by destroyers, aircraft carriers are the eyes of the fleet and from their decks take off the offensive torpedo attacks and the defensive fighter patrols required by a battle fleet at sea. However, when a battle fleet puts to sea, it commands more than the types so far shown in this film depot and repair ships, for instance. Here is a typical depot and repair ship. Actually, this ship is the Woolwich. And submarines. Here is a submarine leaving harbor to join the fleet. Contemplating the British Navy, it is impossible not to think of that immortal sailor, Admiral Lord Nelson, and ponder on his words. I may have two fleets to fight, he said, but if I have the ships, then so much the better. Not to attack, I would consider a national disgrace. My principle is to assist in driving the enemy to the devil and restoring peace and happiness to mankind. No, 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 salvo, salvo, salvo. No, no, no.
battleship in the Royal Navy, the Queen Elizabeth class, the Royal Sovereign class, the Nelson class, and the King George V class. And they are augmented by the three battle cruisers, Hood, Renown, and Repulse. The veterans of the fleet are the five ships of the Queen Elizabeth class. But before discussing them, we will study a diagram which shows us how modern reconstruction has affected their appearance. The QE class first three ships, Warspite, Queen Elizabeth and Valiant, now have a square box-like control tower and a single orthodox funnel. But the fourth and fifth ships of this class, Barham and Malaya, retain the tripod foremast and the original broad trunked funnel. Once a feature of all the five ships, but now to be found in Barham and Malaya only. Here is a picture of Warspite, and the square box-like control tower is easily discernible. And here is the feature which will aid recognition of Barham and Malaya. It is the broad trunked funnel and the tall towering tripod foremast. This funnel is found in Barham and Malaya only. The Royal Sovereign class, four ships, Royal Sovereign, Revenge, Ramillies and Resolution, have been easy to identify for many years now because of their tripod foremast, hard abaft of which is a single orthodox funnel. It is its close proximity to the tripod foremast which identifies these ships. There are four ships in this class. May I repeat their names? Royal Sovereign, Revenge, Ramillies, and Resolution. And Revenge and Resolution carry cows on the top of the funnel. Here we are, we can see the funnel cowling in this picture. In 1923 to 1925, the fleet was joined by the Nelson class. Two ships, Nelson and Rodney. Here they are, both together on the screen now. They are easy ships to recognize by virtue of the fact that the whole of the main armament is carried forward of the octopoidal or control tower. It is clearly demonstrated in this picture. The whole of the main armament is carried forward of the control tower on the lengthy fore deck. The control tower is a well-defined feature. And here is the latest addition to the fleet, King George V. Five ships, King George V, Prince of Wales, Duke of York, Jellicoe, and Beatty. This is the first battleship for many years in the Royal Navy, which carries two funnels and the square modern control tower is well in evidence. King George V carries quadruple gun turrets. It is the only British battleship which carries turrets with four guns in them. The battle cruisers Hood, Renown and Repulse augment the battle fleet and here is Hood easily distinguished by her great length, tripod foremast and two funnels, which it will be seen here, are similar in size and construction. Remember that the two funnels in hood are of the same size, even at this rather longer range. It will be noticeable. Whereas in the other two battle cruisers, Renown and Repulse, it will be noticed that the second funnel is shorter than the first funnel.
this picture displays this feature to a nicety. Tripod foremost, two funnels, and the second funnel is shorter. But Renown has been reconstructed, and again we see this box-like modern control tower. Actually, she may be mistaken at long range for the battleship King George V, which also, you will remember, has two funnels and a square box-like control tower, and her main armament guns are carried in three turrets. But in Renown, the turrets are twin turrets. Whereas in King George V, the turrets are quadruple. Here they are. The strength of the Royal Navy in aircraft carriers is invested in two hardy old veterans, the Eagle and Furious, and the modern Ark Royal and the new Illustrious class. Here is the Eagle. Eagle is very easily distinguished by virtue of the fact that she carries two funnels carried up through the island superstructure on the starboard side of the flight deck. In fact, she is the only carrier which carries two funnels so disposed. A well-defined tripod foremast and a full-length flight deck complete the picture. Furious also lends herself easily to identification by virtue of the fact that she carries no flight deck superstructure whatever. Perhaps the best known carrier in the fleet at the moment is the Ark Royal. And a similar type of carrier, very much the same in appearance, is joining the fleet, that is, the new illustrious class. Ark Royal has a full-length flight deck, one funnel to starboard, and a light mast. Note how the flight deck overlaps the stern and the stem giving Ark Royal a rather closed-in appearance. Before going through these battleships, battle cruisers, and carriers again, let us study this sketch. Queen Elizabeth class, first three ships, box-like control tower, and single orthodox funnel. That is in the top left-hand corner. Queen Elizabeth class, fourth and fifth ships to the right, tripod formus, and the original broad trunked funnel. The Royal Sovereign class, that is Royal Sovereign, Ramillies, Revenge and Resolution, tripod foremost and single orthodox funnel hard about this foremost. The Nelson class with her well-defined octopoidal or control tower and single orthodox funnel and the whole of her main armament carried forward. And the King George V class, the only class of British battleship at present which carries two funnels. Actually, this picture is the fleet led by Wars Fight bombarding Tobruk. Wars Fight's box like control tower is quite visible. And here is the funnel feature which lends itself to identification of Barham and Malaya. Royal Sovereign class, tripod foremost, and hard above this foremost, a single orthodox funnel. Nelson, with the whole of her main armament, carried on her lengthy foredeck. And King George V class, two funnels and quadruple gun turrets. The battle cruisers hood renown and repulse. Actually, this is repulse carry two funnels also, but with the exception of Hood, the second funnel is shorter. The aircraft carrier Ark Royal, with her full-length flight deck, entirely overlapping both the stem and the stern, giving the ship a very closed-in appearance.
there she is again. Note that full length flight deck and the single funnel carried to starboard and the light tripod mast. cruisers, as the term implies, are powerful units of the cruiser type. Of 13 heavy cruisers in the Royal Navy, 11 belong to the county class and are easy to recognize by virtue of the three slender funnels carried amidships. Here are these three funnels again. Actually, the county class cruisers are really three types, or rather classes of cruiser. The Dorsetshire class, Dorsetshire and Norfolk. The London class, London, Devonshire, Shropshire and Sussex. And the five Kents, that is Kent, Cornwall, Cumberland, Berwick and Suffolk. It is easy to see why they are broadly referred to as county class cruisers. The two remaining heavy cruisers are the York and Exeter. Originally designed to carry three funnels, the first funnel was trunked into the second to make the bridge more habitable and save weight and space. The two funnels now carried close together amidships, tall slender funnels identify York and Exeter. And it should be remembered that in York, the funnels and the masts are raked, and in Exeter, they stand vertical. Light cruisers are very similar in general conception. There is a variety of light cruiser classes in the Royal Navy, Southampton class, Leander class, Arethusa class, and uh, Hawkins class. But if a description is given of Southampton class, Leander class, and Arethusa class, it should suffice to give a pretty clear indication of what the average British light cruiser looks like. The Southampton class, sometimes referred to as the town or city class, bear the names of well-known cities such as Newcastle, Glasgow or Sheffield. And the outstanding recognition feature is the manner in which the bridge structure is carried aft to form aircraft accommodation, up through which the first of two funnels is carried. The first funnel is thus partially obscured. These funnels are slightly raked and the foremost and the mainmost of light tripod design and also raked identify the Southampton class cruisers. Here is a smaller ship, the Arethusa. There are four ships in this class, Arethusa, Galatea, Penelope and Aurora, all worthy descendants of the original saucy Arethusa. Their identification feature is quite obviously the manner in which the two funnels are carried vertically and widely spaced amidships. Between these funnels is mounted the aircraft catapult 
and aircraft. Here is a single funneled British cruiser, the Leander class, in which there are five ships, Leander, Neptune, Ajax, Orion, and Achilles. And the feature here, quite obviously, is the single squat vertical funnel, which is broadly trunked both fore and aft. Older cruisers are of the C and D class. They are generally easily recognized by virtue of their tripod foremast and tall topmast and gallantmast. But it should be remembered that some of them have been converted into anti-aircraft cruisers. And in these ships, the mast has been cut down, although the funnels remain. Destroyers do not lend themselves easily to class identification. Normally, one is restricted to reporting so many destroyers and letting it go at that. But it is absolutely essential, of course, that we make sure that they are, in fact, destroyers. This picture should make one familiar with the rakish lines of these small ships in which every possible sacrifice has been made to achieve high speed and maneuverability. However, some destroyers lend themselves to class identification. For instance, the tribal class. This ship is the Cossack, well known for the part she played in the Altmark operation. Light tripod masts an unusual feature actually in destroyers, and twin gun turrets are the features which aid identification of the tribal class. And here are some of the 50 American destroyers which have recently joined the British fleet. They are the easiest of all destroyers to recognize by virtue of the fact that they carry four funnels. And that is about all one need say about them. It should be noticed, however, that sometimes destroyers can be identified by the pennant numbers which are painted on the bow. Here is an example, H61. These pennant numbers are also painted on the stern. Here is another example, H08. And now for the sloop. There are a large number of sloops in the Royal Navy, and they also are much the same in general conception. Small vessels of about a thousand tons displacement, they all look very much the same as this one, which actually is the Aberdeen. Sloops of the flower class, Rosemary, Lupin, and Foxglove, carry two funnels. And here are some minesweepers. Frequently, minesweepers are small vessels of the trawler type. And this diagram adequately shows one way, at least, in which they carry out their function. There are a number of depot and repair ships in the Royal Navy. Medway, Woolwich, Resource, Sandhurst. This is a typical depot and repair ship and actually is the Woolwich. And here is another type of depot ship, the submarine depot ship, Cyclops. All these units which you have seen in this film, however small some of them may be, are vital and effective parts of the Royal Navy. <laughs>